Hey guys, this is Brother Noah here. Wanted to come on here. As you all know, we just finished up our uh, last put. We were just finishing up our podcast and we put one up. We got a few more to do. And I wanted to come on here, um, talk about, do a little Bible study with you guys. Right now in East Tennessee, it is actually 12.59. If I'm not mistaken, yes. And uh, in the day and i'm here working here in the office and trying to get some sermons ready trying to get this stuff done and um was had on my heart something i realized brother austin said the other day and um i will be reading sorry i'm fixing this up on my screen font size yeah sorry i have my blue red bible 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 pulled up with some of the rest of what I was going to read. I hardly couldn't see it. So, um, okay. So, today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit on something that Brother Austin said and something that I believe is credential, so important to understanding um, the Great Commission. And as I've studied this and as, as I've read this, um, you can look at this passage anyway. I like to look at it as something in Great Commission. And so, um, we're going to be first here in Matthew 16. And then I want to turn over, if you get your Bibles, turn over with us or just on your phone. Turn over to Matthew 28 here in just a minute and read the Great Commission. But first, let's look at Matthew 28 and let's read all scripture in context. So, we're going to go from 13 to 19. And so, that's kind of what I want to do here. And so, let us begin reading. When Jesus came into the into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, "Whom do men say that say that the Son of Man am?" And then, and they said, "Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that thou art Elijah. Others say that thou art Jeremiah." Others say that thou art uh, one of the prophets. He said unto them, Whom, but whom say, whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, Barjona, for flesh and blood, has not revealed this unto you, you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto, uh, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of heaven. Keys of the kingdom, sorry, of heaven. And whosoever thou shalt bound on heaven shall be bound on heaven and bound in heaven. Whosoever thou shalt loosen on earth shall be loose in heaven. This then charged his disciples that they shall should tell no man that Jesus that he was Jesus the Christ. Alright, so there's a lot of reading in that. And um you know that, but I really want to focus for just a few minutes on the Great Commission. So in Matthew chapter 28, let's look at Matthew 28 together. Start in verse number 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe and to teaching them to obey all things whatsoever I have commanded thee commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Alright, so the reason I bring these two passages together, um kind of sounds you really, there's a lot of people could bring them together. I've heard a lot, I'm not bringing them together. But I want people to understand um, the church has a mission. 
The church's mission has been set up for 2,000 years to go and declare the gospel. Now, have we failed as a church? Yes, we have failed tremendously to go out and declare the gospel. Now, when I say that we have failed, we have. And it's sad. But um, I'm grateful to see men of God stepping back up to fulfill the gospel. Because for many years, we thought, well, the only way we can get them in here is bring them into the church. That's the only way you can say, listen, there's so many different ways to evangelize. Um, but the verse that I really thought about with the Great Commission was, with the gates of hell shall not prevail, is, as I love to always say this, man, for 2,000 years, the gates of hell have really tried to prevail against the church. You say, what do you mean? Well, you think about the Roman persecution. You think about persecutions in Christians in Muslim countries. You think about persecution Christians in uh, Germany during World War II. Even, don't people say, well, there no were more Jews. There were Christians who were persecuted who stood up against that. Um, you think about the people in the Cold War. Um, there was Christians in Russia who were persecuted for their faith. Um, if you ever want to read a good book on that, for all that is... Um, I have it here somewhere. Um, oh, right here. Right here. Tortured, tortured for Christ. A tremendous book talked about the horrendous tortures that um, the Soviet Union did to a man, a Christian, a great, a good man of God. He is actually the founder of the Voice of the Martyrs group. And so, listen, um, the devil has tried for 2,000 years. He knew he couldn't keep Jesus in the grave. So the devil has tried for 2,000 years to attack the church. He has tried to destroy it, and many times he bout has. You say, what do you mean? He thought, man, I've won, but no. There's always a remnant. There's always. Um, I always like that saying, you cut one head off, one of our heads off, ten more will show up. And... I always, that's to me, that is the Christian faith throughout history of the persecution of Christians. Now, there has been times when churches have prevailed and the church has been in order, and we did make mistakes. Uh, well, we, well, the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church made mistakes uh, by killing many people. Um, they killed Christians. And so what I want people to understand is, is the gospel, which is Jesus Christ, and preaching it and declaring it a lot of times have been stopped by churches, have been stopped by everybody under the sun, even governments have tried to, to stop people from declaring the gospel. But here's the thing. Until Jesus comes back, it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and go on and go on. And what I always like to tell, and I appreciate Brother Jeff listening to Brother Jeff Darwin on this, and a couple other men have actually said it is, um, the view of eschatology most people hold, we hold to is it's all going to get worse and worse, so we just need to sit still and not declare the gospel. The problem with that is we become lazy when we say, oh, Jesus is getting ready to come back. There's nothing we can do. There is a lot we can do. There is a lot that we can do as Christians. Listen, I'm so grateful that I have found some friends who are, will be, um, I've said it before on other YouTube channels, and never got to go because we've backed out, people have backed out. But I'm grateful that I found people who's willing to go street preaching, and we hope to start that soon. And so, but the thing is, we have to go out and get them. Because let me explain something to you. With the way the world puts the church, and this is going to sound bad with all these documentary series and all these things talking about the church world. Nobody's going to want to come into the church anymore. Why? Because they say we're legalistic. We're, we're terrible people. We're, we're awful people. We're not what Jesus is. Let me explain something to you. Go out. Share the gospel on the street corners. That'll get them in. You might get mocked. And that's something I hope to start doing here in a few weeks with a few brothers. And so... Um, I really want people to understand that God's church will always go on. Listen, 
and I tell people like this, people tell me, oh, we're in the end time here. We may not be. And you will get mad at me for saying that, but this is what I want people to understand is everything that's happened in this world has happened before. And the first person they're going to blame is the Christians. But we still have a job to do. We still have a job to declare the gospel, chase after the Reformation. Man, as I said there, there were so many men in the Reformation that were chasing it and they were pushing it. At the same time, they were dying for their faith. And what people don't realize is it's hard sometimes. It's, it's been easy for America to be Christian. But we're seeing the first views of America not liking Christians. And you ain't seen the worst of it yet. But here's the thing. The gospel's still going to go on. And no matter what, to get, well, no matter what the devil will throw his way, our way or the way of the gospel is the word of God will still go on. It's been going on for 2,000 years. I can actually say this. It's been going on. The seeds of the gospel have been planted like with Moses giving us the law and Christ coming and dying on the cross and we are to go out and declare this has been set up forever. So what I'm grateful for is going out and getting to share the gospel with people. And listen, on here, I want to share the gospel as much as I can. But the first thing we've got to do when people say, well... Matthew 28, Matthew is not pointed to us, it's uh, it's kingdom books, or it's, 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 we don't need to go out near this, blah, 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 that's all that is. Look at this. My favorite word in the Bible is go. Let's look at it. Verse number 19, go, okay, go, ye, therefore, Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. There's the Trinity right there. One thing that I, I tell people all the time, and I'm in the works of getting research together on this. Brother Austin knows this. Um, is I am writing a book, a history of church one of my favorite people and you say why do you feel why would you want to do that there's just so little is because i have learned of i'm writing a book on saint patrick the reason i do that is i love the dude i love studying history love studying his writings and a lot of people don't really know that he actually was a real person and he wrote stuff but one of my favorite things about saint patrick is if you studied him His whole life in Ireland, when he went back as a missionary, was based out of Matthew 28, 19. You say, what do you mean? He goes and he teaches a nation. He, he, is, he is responsible for the converting of Ireland. He teaches a nation. He converted a nation. And he's responsible for baptizing them. And so what people forget so many times is we like to bring up stuff where people have thought he's... But the gospel is powerful enough to convert a nation. No, I'm not preaching Christian nationalism. No, I'm not doing that. But what I'm trying to say is... The only thing that can save America and save all these countries around here is not politics. It's not the world. Evangelizing to the nation is what saves people. Listen, they're going to throw everything up in your way. But here's the amazing thing about it. God's people will prevail. God's people will persevere. Perseverance. And so what I want people to understand is there's always going to be somebody who comes and you can witness them and they're not going to get saved. That's fine. 
But you keep going out. You keep praying. You keep preaching the word. You keep telling the word with these people. And God will reward you for your favor. I'm not talking about rewards in heaven. I'm talking about well, souls. I'm talking about he rewards you getting to see somebody saved. And if you want to go out and declare the gospel is one of the best things you can do. Because here's something that I've realized here recently. I hope to talk to some more people about this and get to their opinions. That nobody is going to come into the church house anymore. I don't care what you say. You have to go out and get them. There's no more of this coming and going stuff. You have to go out and get these people. And the reason I say that is because the church world is in a bad light right now. Because of heretics and because of people who made the gospel about self-pleasure and about legalism and made it about real stuff that don't matter. And now the church world is in such a bad light. Um, that's why people don't like church. We, I, I have family that don't like church because they don't like church people. And, um... It's sad because here in these mountains, there is a lot of that stuff. And so I say it like this. We've got to go out and declare the gospel. Um, I hope to be doing it with some new people that have met here recently at a church. And I hope to go when they let us, when we go again, I hope to go with them. And so I hope that the word of God gets declared. And I've seen it be declared. But the sad thing is, is if we don't do this, nobody's going to come in anyway. And because the church has a bad light. And the church having a bad light is sad, but it's true. But his church will persevere. It'll go on. The gates of hell can throw everything about it in front of it and whatever they want to throw he, the devil's going to try to do everything, but God's church will go on. So, I say this in love. Um, I know I didn't stay on what I wanted to stay on, but really, 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 we've got to go out. Let me read this one more time. Verse number 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to obey all things, preserve all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So guys, we love you. I hope to do this tomorrow or whenever the Lord allows me to do it again, whenever I can get a chance. Um, we hope to be putting up another podcast pretty soon and hope to stay that. Um, um, so, guys, I have another announcement. Um, we get this over with. I hope to start doing some church history stuff on here with you guys. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It's something me and I was talking about. I was going to do it on another page. I mean, Austin was like, why don't we just do it here and make it off on here? So, something we're going to do. Um, he's got some stuff he wants to bring before you guys. And so, um, we just want to grow this. We just want to share the gospel, people. So, like, share, subscribe. Um, my work is not the best in the world. I mean, reading is not the best in the world. But I do want to say we just want to get the gospel out. And so, um, I hope to do a series on the gospel. One of us will. And so, um, but we love you guys. And God bless.